Hey guys, it's John the Vintage Geek back inside the Vintage Geek's toy room. I got a little quick one to do here today. So look at this. We got Dirge. Ooh. Dirge has been sitting up on top of a big bookcase for a long time and he hasn't seen the light of day. So I brought him down just so he can he can see some stuff that's going on once in a while. But today we found Skeletor at a Walmart store. And now this is a this is a thing. So I bought I knew I was going to open one, so I bought the one that had this razor cut all the way through the package. It's like cut in half, and the package is pretty beat up at the bottom and stuff. And then I have an, a, a nice one that I'm going to keep for myself in the package. Since I knew I was going to open one of these, I tried to buy the worst, the one that was in the worst shape. Because I, I left four or five of these on the shelf for other people. And I didn't want them to have to be like, oh, crap, I'm going to have to buy a crappy one that's all cut up. So I bought the damaged one to open. But this leads me to another dilemma. Like, I was just talking with one of my friends down here in Florida about, like, like he wanted a Skeletor and I, had, I only bought the two. So I'm like, ah, crap, I knew I should have bought another one or two of them. But it's like... I come from the old school way of thinking where I'm going to buy what I need. So one to open and one to have sealed and the rest I'm going to leave on the package or on the shelves for other people to buy. But these days scalpers are so rampant that you, I guarantee you when I left that store, a scalper was probably right behind me and he bought every single one that was left on the shelf. And now he's going to put them up on eBay for $50. So Am I doing people a favor by leaving them on the shelf for other people? Or should I have bought all six or seven, like the entire run? Should I have just bought them all and cleaned Walmart out? And then go, who out there needs them? And then give them to the people who need them for a retail price. You know, I won't, I won't mark them up because I'm not an asshole. So <laughs> it's like, what's the proper thing to do? Like, what's the better thing for society? Should I buy them all and then distribute them at retail price to everyone who needs them? Or should I leave them on the shelf for somebody else and just have it take a chance? Um, that's what kind of brought up the question when I was talking to my friend today about this. It's, it's a conundrum, you know, because in the past, you could just leave them on the shelf and another collector would come through and buy them. But now that scalping is so rampant, scalpers are just like everywhere all the time and they're creating this extreme problem is it really better for us collectors to just buy them all so that the scalpers don't get their hands on them and then we ourselves try to distribute them at regular normal retail price i don't know uh what's the what's the correct thing to do the moral <laughs> the thing that helps our collecting community you know yeah that's the dilemma so these are new for 20. I'm assuming they mean 2020. Masters of the Universe Skeletor, Evil Lord of Destruction. Modern posing retro play. Modern posing mean that they are not retro figures. They are new sculpts, new designs of the action figure with knees that bend and elbows that bend. So more articulation than what we had in the old one. Comes with a comic, Mattel. Skeletor looks really good in the packaging there. Ages six and up. The back of the box. The nefarious overlord Skeletor wants to control the power within Castle Grayskull. <gasps> Includes the comic book. <gasps> Great looking image there. Let's see if we can read this with the slice through it. Modernizing and celebrating the original 80s Masters of the Universe action figures... Masters of the Universe Origins gives you the power to pose Eternia's greatest warriors as retro style figures or in new action packed battle positions. So he's got the Fit Havoc staff into hand, twist into powerful battle positions, conforms to all the safety requirements. There are heroic warriors coming. He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Tila, heroic warrior goddess. And Man-at-Arms, heroic master of weapons. And then for the evil warriors, we got Skeletor, evil lord of destruction. 
Evelyn, the evil warrior goddess, and Beastman, savage henchman, each sold separately, subject to availability, and colors and decorations may vary. Now, I asked the woman at the store who was loading these up on the shelf, and she said that they got a case of these, and this was the only figure in the case. So the case was Skeletor. And they did not get any of the other characters. They did not get He-Man, Tila, Man-at-Arms, Evelyn, or Beast-Man. So does that mean that Skeletor is just coming out first in his own case, and then later you'll get a mixed case with the rest of the figures? Or does that mean that each figure has his own case? It is my hope that each figure just has his own case. Like, you order Skeletor, you get eight Skeletors. You order He-Man, you get eight He-Mans. You know what I mean? That is my hope. And um, all they ever, all they got in was one case of Skeletor, and it had eight Skeletors in it. So that's what she said anyways. So, um, yeah. She was like, that's all we got. We just got a case. I put them all on the shelf, blah, blah, blah. So let's get them open. Let's take a look at them, and we'll put them aside... The real retro, the, the 80s version, we'll, we'll compare them. You know, since I'm not keeping this, I'm going to see how it was all cut. Look at that. It was just slit right down the middle with a razor blade. So, like, who? no one wants that. So since I knew I was going to open it anyways, that's why I bought it. So I was like, well, I'll buy the ruined one and open it. Because no one's going to want that. Here's the, uh, even the comic book is damaged. Beast Barrage. <laughs> Excellent, Evil in. <laughs> Snake Mountain up there, look at that. He-Man, He-Man, by the power of Grayskull. Grr, attack. Yeah, bam, oh, pow, pop. Get the figures on the back. Pretty neat. All right. Let's see what we got here. Toss all that on the ground. Skeletor. <laughs> all right, we're going to just chop those bands that are holding him and what is this tape holding in the the weapons are held in the weapons are held in by tape maybe I should have brought some scissors in here or something I don't know eh. come on Ooh, these are different. Look at that. I guess I could put my hand for focus. Yeah, these are different. They're not retro style weapons by any means, but they do have little peg holes to clip together with He-Man's one. This is sturdier. It feels sturdier than the um than the original. Let's get this original one over here. Hold on. You know how the original feels a little bit rubbery? This is like more of a solid piece. Different colors, different uh, spacing between the bands here. The skull on the end is very close. It's just different spacing in this part, but the skull... Wow, those look really similar, don't they? And the end is pretty much... Is that end just... No, I think they're pretty much the same. It's just different. clearly a different material. I mean, look at the bend in this one. You can really wear this. Not really. So, huh. And then we'll look at the sword here. Unfortunately, my original sword has a tiny break in it, but that's okay. But these attach to the edge of the sword, and it's really defined diamond, this diamond shape in the middle. 
It gets thinner at the end with a rounded tip where this is more of a pointy tip. And the original pit fit together with like a peg, a slot, where these are pegs and holes. Ah, I just lost it. Skeletor! <laughs> so he's got the little thingy down there, loin loincloth thingy, just like the original. It snaps in a lot like the original. The top has this clip in both, very much like the original. See? Pretty cool. Very close. Articulation though, we've got head that can go all the way around. And it moves up and down. Look at that, it can go all the way up and down a little bit. The arms can move out and go around. No butterfly on this one, no butterfly. We got an elbow joint and at the elbow they can swivel around. And then we have a hand joint, which is a really good moving hand joint and it also can spin around. Now, again, you know, McFarland does really good hand joints, wrist joints, and now so does Mattel. You got to make you wonder what's going on with Hasbro with those dainty little hand joints that are always unable to move or pretty much break. The other two companies are making better wrist joints. You guys got to get on it. Yeah, I like this. And now we got a waist twist. They've, they've taken away the spring action. There's no more spring action. You just waist twist goes all the way around interesting my back piece is coming off here i'm playing too rough with them already you know it's like coming apart <laughs> now the uh the legs they can go out we've got leg joints that let you spin out like that you can go forward about that far and backwards about that far so you gotta can, can do that got no thigh twisting or anything but we do have like a knee joint that bends and it twists at the knee joint so you've got a, a knee joint and a twist and then you also have a calf twist here and you've got a twist in the feet and a bend in the feet which again you know McFarland does really good ankle joints and so do Mattel now. These are really good ankle joints from Mattel. And they are superior to Hasbro. So that's the thing. The ankle joints and the wrist joints in Hasbro really need some work. And uh, Mattel and McFarlane Toys have figured out how to do it. And then there are holes, peg holes in the feet. Which were never there in the originals. So the originals, by the way, in case you're not familiar, they just had leg movement and barely any forward and backwards. It was mostly just twisting them and then arms that went around 360 and a head that moved, usually a rubbery kind of head. And then they had spring action in the, in the, my spring is going there it is. Well, no, that's, yeah, there it goes. Had to get it worked up. <laughs> it hasn't been a long time since I've actually probably played with this figure. So, yeah, he's that's, that's pretty much what you had on the originals. And now you've got a lot more to work with here on these new ones. Let's get in close and take a look at them side by side. Side by side, they're basically the same size figures. I mean, his knees are bent. So, I mean, if you bent his knees and put them in the same position, they'd be the same size, you know? Um, they really, really do uh, just harken back to the good old days, you know? 
they're a modernized version of the you know retro figures which i like i think it's a really cool idea skeletor's got red in his eyes more of an open mouth version than this one this one just looks gruesome you know what i mean like ah, <laughs> where he looks more of a character you know really neat really cool I like them. Let's get all the weapons and equipment on him. He can hang on to the sword a little bit better in that clawed hand than uh, Skeletor can over here. But, yeah. Dirge, get out of the picture. What? It's not my fault. You put me down here. I know. I usually have my Skeletor sitting on Panther, Panthor, so I put the sword in the back like that just to do it, because maybe putting it in his hand there broke it. I don't remember if it was always broken or if I, you know, if it just recently broke. So maybe I should just leave it in his back like that and not have him using it. I don't know. But the damage is already done, so it doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> But look, he looks good hanging on to that. I mean, he can really hang on to the sword pretty good. His staff fits well in that hand. Looks really good. Let's get him up on the turntable. We'll do some roundabouts here. Yeah, Skeletor! <laughs> get him more in the light. We'll do it this way. His muscles rippling like they should. Over the top muscles. See, the muscle thing works with He Man and the Masters of the Universe because they are fantasy characters, you know? So it didn't translate when they did that with Batman and the Super Friends and all them and, and Star Wars and stuff where they made them all beefcake. Like, that wasn't how they were, you know. Just because He-Man sold and they were big, muscular, chunky figures doesn't mean that it made sense for other lines, you know. It, it I mean, it really made sense for He-Man and Masters of the Universe. Like I said, because they were a fantasy line. Ugh. Ugh. Stupid turntable. Yes, I have that lopsided turntable where one side... If you don't put him in the exact right spot, he'll flop over on one side because it's... It does like a chunk, you know, somewhere in the spin. Gotta get a new turntable, I guess. These things don't last forever. Ugh. <laughs> all right so here he is with his staff in both hands sort of and uh the sword tucked in his back that kind of works out all right what else can we do with him i guess hmm let's think of one more pose before we go into our wrap-up Come now, He-Man, fight me for the power sword. Castle Grayskull shall be mine. He's going to totally take over the universe with this cool sword that he's got. He's clenching his hand in front like, Ah, I have the power now. <laughs> uh. See, like in Black Star, the sword got split in half, and they really did the uh, two halves of one sword. But in He-Man, in the cartoon, they kind of let that go. Skeletor never even really had this sword in the cartoon. But originally, it was going to be a power sword that was split in two, just like Black Star. He-Man Masters of the Universe had a lot of um, the same story elements as Black Star. I mean, they were the exact same company, after all. It ran from Black Star right into Masters of the Universe where they, you know, my feeling is that's where Filmation perfected it, you know, which is why it was such a hit.
Well, there you go, guys. Another really cool line of toys for you to collect. Our first look at Skeletor from the Retro Play New for 20 line by Mattel. Masters of the Universe Origins Skeletor in a comparison with the original. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for all you new subscribers hitting that subscribe button because I really appreciate it. We're just about at 1,500 people, and that is amazing. It's blowing my mind. So I really want to thank you, and I really want to say I appreciate it so much. Yeah, cool. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later. Hope you got out of this everything you need to get out of it. I really, uh, really do hope you did. First look at Skeletor. Can't wait to get the rest of the line. This is going to be really cool. All right, guys. See you later. I'm John, and I'm out of here.